Hey guys, here again with another Shure Grov knife video. Today we have in front of us the Stellaris. Now, this knife was made available for lottery at Friday Night Blade Affair in 2021, um, just a couple days ago from the making of this video at least. And it seems that Sergei has once again made a inset liner lock version of an existing model. Uh, which is what we have right here. Stellaris, a lot of people are referring this to the Stellar, but it seems like there is a distinctly different name from the titanium handle model. Uh, as you can see right here, I have a Sprint Run Stellar and the Stellaris with that composite handle next to it. Now, this trend is actually, uh, it seems to be quite new. Uh, you could say that the F3 uh, which is a liner lock version of the F95, have different names. But I found that quite interesting that the Quantum, uh, both the custom versions and the custom division versions, did not seem to have, let's see, a different change in the name. This is a Quantum. This is also a Quantum. The Titanium versions are called Quantums. However, the titanium handled versions of the Stellar are of course called the Stellar. Composite material handle is called the Stellaris. So uh, curious to see if that trend will continue in the future. But uh, taking a look here at this knife today, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. Um, I threw a couple of knives up to compare it, but uh, again, since the Stellar slash Stellaris is relatively new, uh, let's put it up against an F95 and a neon size knife. And you can see again that it slots in quite well between the two sizes. So uh, the neon zero size is 85 millimeters. The Stellaris is 90 millimeters and the 95 of course is 95 millimeters per Shurikarov. Uh, what this translates to is actually not around three and a quarter inches of cutting, uh, sorry, three and three quarters inches of cutting length, as you can see right here. So again, a lot of people find this to be the Goldilocks sweet spot, especially given the uh, extremely generous uh, or extremely um, uh, equal blade to handle ratios uh, for that sugar grove knives have, uh, makes for a really great size. The overall length here is eight and a half inches. And when closed, you can see that the handle has a length of just over four and a half inches, between four and a half and four and three quarters inches. Now, taking a look at the scale here, uh, we'll go ahead and weigh this knife. Unfortunately, there are a couple things to consider for the reference here. Uh, the Stellars that I've seen they tend to have 3.5 millimeter blades. Uh, that is true even for the custom vision and uh, the sprint run as well. The Stellaris here seems to have a four millimeter blade. So it is thicker and that will contribute to the weight difference here. So unfortunately, I, I don't seem to have, I don't have any uh, custom Stellars titanium handles uh, to compare the weight to, but let's go ahead and take a look here at the weight of the knife. And you can see that we're looking at 3.17 ounces. So um, very light actually. Uh, when we take a look at the custom division version here, you can see that it is significantly heavier uh, at over an ounce uh, heavier, 4.23. Actually for uh, fun, let's go ahead and weigh the sprint run version. 4.28, so very interesting. It seems like the damascus steel might have a little bit more weight to it uh, due to the blade composition. Um, but yes, looking at 3.17 ounces, you're looking at an extremely light knife. Um, this is really great because the majority of the handle uh, is carbon or carbo T, the handle being used here, uh, with that inset liner lock as opposed to say full size liners on uh, an F3. Now, taking a look at the blade here, you can see that the blade is Norris Composite Damascus. Uh, I believe it's composite given the horizontal lines here, uh, but I can't be 100% sure. Um, it's either ladder or composite ladder. I'm very sure on that actually. 
Uh, if you notice here, you can see there are satin flats on the blade. And the blade profile has changed over the Stellar. Uh, at first, I was thinking that perhaps maybe there were just two different blade configurations for this model, the Stellar and the Stellaris. But it seems that uh, given the fact that there were two Stellarises at the show, uh, having the same blade profile, and there was also a Titanium Stellar at the show with the original blade profile, I would hazard to say that this is going to be the blade profile for the Stellaris. Now, what does that actually mean and how do they compare? Well, I have a custom division model here for you to take a look at. And as you can see, similar to the video that I put up on the Sprint Run model, you can see that there is an extra cut, uh, different than what you see on the F95, but uh, similar aesthetics. And there is also no jimping up here. Well, there is a little bit of jimping that lines up when the knife is closed, but that jimping is uh, pretty much uh, non-existent when you go and choke up on the knife here. When you take a look at the Stellaris, you can see that there is a, quite a large patch of usable jimping, uh, similar to what you would see on an F95 with jimping. And uh, that's excellent as well. Uh, I really, you know, going through uh, the Stellar Sprint Run, uh, one of the things I was really griping about was the lack of you know, functional jimping. This patch right here is just not usable. And uh, given the fact that there is this you know, very slight curved, uh, you might even say thumb ramp, uh, it, it's, you really want to rest your thumb here and the lack of jimping uh, really was a downside for me. I can understand that perhaps maybe because due to the extra cut, the blade spine would just be too thin at this point, uh, especially given the fact that uh, this is a 3.5 millimeter blade and uh, this is a four millimeter blade, but it really would have been nice to see some jimping. And on the Stellaris, we're, we're getting exactly that. This jimping uh, is incredibly functional. On this example in particular, given the fact that we have uh, this etched steel here on the top, that etching actually gives the jimping a little bit more grip as well. Um, so again, specific to this particular example, but uh, really excellent to see that jimping be added here on the Stellaris blade profile. Now, if you notice, there is also a, a slight curve, curvature, the slight dip here on the jimping that I think uh, feels really nice, a little depression uh, to fit the profile of your finger. There is also a very nice chamfering that uh, extends only for the patch of the jimping, as you can see here. Uh, very, very nice, small details. Uh, there is no long swedge that you see coming out the rest of the spine. Uh, that you do see on the Stellar blade profile, however. Um, but again, this is a very uh, functionally attractive blade. Um, some people might argue that they would like the extra cut. However, this isn't the first time where I preferred a more utilitarian blade profile. Uh, the Neon Zero and the Neon NL come to mind, both production knives. Uh, the Neon NL has the swedges and uh, more aesthetically pleasing, I guess you could say, depending on the person, uh, wider jimping. But that jimping just isn't functional, whereas the Neon NL, full, fat, full flat grind, no swedges, but uh, very usable jimping on the spine. That is actually my preferred blade profile for the production Neon. So very interesting, again, to see how the blade profiles differ within even the same model. Uh, moving on to the handle here you can see that we have this wonderful new material uh, called carbo tea that sergey is using friday night blade affair there were actually quite a few knives that were using carbo tea and uh, I, this is actually one of the best examples of it that we had seen at the show here now this one is blue and kind of a light purple lavender ish color uh, along with the rest of the black carbon fiber here. Now, Carbo T itself is something similar to what we see with bronze dust uh, carbon fiber here, where the color is coming from a metallic dust. Now, in this case, we're talking about anodized titanium, which allows us to get colors kind of outside the range of, you know, these other precious metals that Shogrub had been using, you know, with, a, you know, bronze dust, carbon plate, uh, the manufacture of the material uh, for, you know, bronze dust, carbon fiber. They also have uh, brass and, and some other various metals as well. So it's really cool to see 
you know, anodized titanium that really opens up the possibility for a lot of new colors to be used, reds, greens, yellows, uh, really, um, if it can be, if titanium can be anodized that color, it's very possible that carbo tea can be creating that color as well. And also it allows the mixing of different colors like you see here as well. It's, it's just really, really interesting material. And uh, this knife has a very great example of it, uh, multicolor carbo tea here. I really love that, you know, this being metallic dust, you get a very shiny effect here with the metal that you just don't see with fat carbon. As you can see here, if I can get the camera to focus on it, you can just see the metallic epoxy uh, just shimmer with that titanium dust. When you compare that to something like fat carbon, uh, as you can see right here, you can see fat carbon just doesn't have the same sheen. It's just, I believe it's just a dye in the, epo sorry, in the epoxy that's causing that uh, coloration for the material. So really want to review this knife later, by the way. Um, but anyways, that's just an introduction on Carbo T. Uh, I'm sure we'll see it much more in the future, uh, especially with Carbo Quartz on the way out. Carbo Quartz having that very nice uh, pearlescent effect to it. Now that that material is kind of gone, uh, we're probably going to see a lot more of this material on more, some of the more premium knives, especially the customs. Now, going through the rest of the handle here, as you can see, the screw is done in this darkened titanium with these, you know, purple anodization accents uh, on the chamfers of the screw here. Uh, pretty much all the chamfers of the titanium parts. Really, really lovely color. It, it almost perfectly matches the purples on the uh, Carbo T handle. Really love it. And uh, again, it's just another small detail that Sergey really likes to pay attention to. Uh, this hardware, I believe, is not the first time we've seen it. Let me uh, go ahead and grab this knife right here. You can see the screws on the 111 Deep Space have a similar effect. I believe the screws on this one are a little bit more purple, however. Uh, let's actually compare it. You can see the, uh, let's say it's actually very similar, especially on the chamfers. Um, this is more purple though, but again, sure, Rob. <laughs> And Sergey really going to great lengths to match the handles with the hardware, or I guess the other way around, the hardware with the handles. Now, going on the back of the knife here, you can see that we have a Chicago type screw setup on the back. That is something that has changed compared to the titanium models, which have a clean uh, show side. It's blind screwed on the back here. Uh, Honestly, I'm not too sure how to uh, how to think about that. If we want to go to even more detail, uh, let's take a look here at the Quantum Carbo, which has a blind screw on the lock side, but a visible small screw on the show side. However, on the custom division, we have a Chicago screw type setup. On the custom titanium quantum, it is blind screwed on the lock side with a clean show side. Really can't really uh, come up with any conclusions or similar trends here. It just seems to be how Sergei is designing the model, um, I, but I do find that interesting. Uh, we have a Chicago type screw setup here, but honestly, uh, given the fact that the Stellar has, sorry, Stellaris has a hole on the rear for the lanyard, I really do like that it's kind of symmetrical on both sides to kind of match that. So not too big of a gripe from me. The logo has been moved to the rear of the handle. Uh, that is different than what we see on the titanium handles. Uh, even on the custom Stellars, the logo has been placed on the inside here of the handle but on the Stellaris, we have it on the rear side, or sorry, the pommel area of the handle. Uh, this is actually very interesting since Sergei does tend to stray away from uh, engraving carbon fiber, especially if the carbon fiber has, uh, you know, very, very vivid colors if it's uh, carbon quartz or something like that. Not too often that you see something like that. Um, one example here, you can see we have this titanium plate on the, the 111 Deep Space so that the uh, Bearers logo Sugar Bear logo is easily visible. But moving on to 
the other side of the knife. I guess it's not really a lock side, is it? Um, since it's an inset liner lock. Um, but we have uh, the clip here and the clip on the Custom Stellars has no milling here as compared to say the Custom Division model. The Custom Division, you can see that there is some milling right here to kind of uh, give it some flair, just a visual flair here. Honestly, while some people kind of would say, you know, well, why shouldn't the custom version have some more flair? I honestly really like seeing smooth textures from Shurgrov. Um, one thing that I really like on my Neon is just the amount of smooth texturing. Um, Sergei spends a lot of time to really finish these contours and it, it really shows. Uh, custom divisions, they usually tend to have more milling. Um, so. Honestly, I actually prefer the smooth clip design. I, I still overall don't, not, I'm not really a big fan of the Stellar clip, especially with this transition here, which I mentioned in my previous video on the Sprint Run Stellar. But if I'm going to have it, uh, I really much prefer the smooth uh, clip curve right here. The retention of the clip, again, just like the titanium versions, is pretty much the same. Overall, the clip design is exactly the same. Um, one thing I did notice about the Stellars, though, the custom ones, is that uh, there are two titanium pillars that are embedded into the carbon fiber that index the clip. Now, for most sure grub knives that have the system, uh, for titanium knives, it's often a ball bearing, but for carbon fiber handles such as the F3, or sorry, composite material handles, um, they'll, they'll use these um, basically titanium rods. And for the custom seller, I've noticed that there are actually two rods being used as opposed to uh, one on the custom division and sprint run. Totally random, but I thought you might find that interesting. Perhaps maybe it's to uh, ensure that these clips are only being used on the customs. Not really too sure. Moving on to the backspacer, you can see we have that wonderful um, light purple anodization to match the chamfers on the screws. Absolutely lovely. lovely. I really like it. Um, the backspacer itself appears thinner than what we've seen on the titanium versions of the Stellar, despite the fact that this has a four millimeter blade stock and these have a 3.5. Now, how could that possibly be? Um, the chamfers seem to be the same width uh, on the sides of the backspacer itself. So it actually really comes down to how the handles are milled to accept the backspacer. Uh, the handles are milled much more generously. Uh, there's a much more a wider gap for that back backspacer as opposed to on the um, Stellaris here, which is much more shallow on the sides. You can still see we have that milling, uh, kind of wave milling going into the opening for the backspacer, as we see on the titanium version as well. But again, that backspacer is just slightly thinner. Uh, on the inside of the backspacer as well, we have uh, a, and also a change to the Stellaris where there's kind of a wide patch right here uh, on the titanium that's open on the inside. Uh, when you compare that to the titanium Stellar, you can see it's much thinner. This is also true on the customs as well. Again, really small details, just something I noticed and uh, wanted to let you guys know. Uh, another thing that we see here, uh, compared to the Titanium Stellar, which has three pins of equal diameter and also a pin here as well to act as a blade guard, on the Stellaris, you see we have no pin at the bottom of the backspacer. And we have these very interesting three variable diameter pins here. We have one millimeter, Let's see here, one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and two millimeter thickness tungsten rods here. Um, Sergey made a point to mention that, that it's using uh, tungsten rods. We'll talk a little about that a little bit uh, when we talk about the pivot system, by the way. Um, the last thing, as you can see here, with no Shurgrove logo on the inside, um, you might think, where is the backspacer signature, which uh, seems to be a common theme for knives with a backspacer. Uh, let's see right here. If we take a look, for example, at say an F7, we have that signature. Now the quantum, because the numbering for the customs was done on the backspacer, they moved, or Sergey moved his signature onto the lock itself. But the Stellar having uh, a fairly thin uh, lock design 
uh, height-wise, uh, as you can see here, there really is no room to put a signature on the inside of the lock. Now, Sergey pointed this to the pointed this out to me at the show, but the signature is actually located. Let's see if I can get this one. It's going to be pretty hard on the inside of the clip here. Wow, it's going to be really hard. Oh, there we go. You can see that signature here. A uh, very nice location. I've seen some other makers do that, and uh, I believe it's the first time that Sergey has done something like that. But given the uh, nice flat portion of the clip, um, it just makes sense as a logical choice to, to put the to put the um, his signature. Now, lastly, uh, for the kind of visuals of the knife, I do want to talk about this really cool darkening process that Sergey has been doing. Um, as you can see here on the lock bar itself, it looks DLC coated or darkened, especially when you compare it to the inside of the lock itself. Uh, this lock being a piece of steel where it looks that it's been satin finished. Now, yes, the, the lock itself has been satin finished, but the darkening here has been done by laser engraving. Uh, this laser engraving is... I believe a very new process that Sergey has been using. As you can see here, uh, there is laser engraving on the jimping, or not jimping, I, I guess the kind of, yeah, I guess you could call this jimping on the, on the lock itself, but uh, any higher than the jimping, you can see that has been satin finished. So really, really cool process he's using here. Uh, if you take a look at the screws that secure the lock, man, kind of hard to get light here. You can see that these screws are also laser darkened oh, let's see there you go these screws are, have been laser darkened as well so very interesting process to see i'm, I'm very curious actually i would like to ask sergey if uh perhaps maybe he could apply this process to um the blade itself sergey has kind of fallen out of favor using dlc because of the high rejection rate with the uh dlc or pvd coating services in russia um, so it might be really cool to see that applied to a blade finisher, perhaps maybe even titanium as well. But a uh, very, very interesting note here. Uh, the effects are very subtle, but it's really cool to see him, again, matching the color of the liners uh, with the handles as well. Speaking about the lock, uh, the lock has changed a little bit in terms of how it's uh, assembled in the knife on the Stellaris. As you can see here, because... Uh, the screws cannot uh, thread into the titanium. Uh, we have the screws being mounted on, from the outside of the handle uh, before the clip is assembled, uh, and that secures the lock bar to the composite material handle. When you compare that to the Stellar here, you can see that the screws for the handle are on the inside. Uh, there is also three points of contact on the Stellar titanium version. Uh, we have two screws and a titanium uh, inserting rod, uh, kind of like what's used on the clip here. Uh, but on the Stellaris, it seems to be just those two screws. So very small detail, but uh, I found it interesting that there is no titanium indexing rod as on the uh, Stellar. Lastly, the pivot system. This being double row roller bearings. I'm trying to take a look here and I actually don't think I can see a spot where the roller symbol has been engraved. Sorry, I'm trying to take it off camera here uh, so I can take a closer look. Um, very interesting. Um, I don't remember seeing it on the Titanium Stellar. Uh, on the Custom Division, you can see we have the single row roller bearing symbol right here, but I'm trying to remember on the customs, I don't remember seeing it. I'm not sure if it was in the same location as here. Uh, it probably is, but I can't actually find the roller uh, bearing symbol on the Stellaris. Very, very interesting fact. I'll see if I can uh, take a closer look at it later. But this knife does have double row roller bearings that is using the new phosphor bronze uh, sealing ring system. Um, that basically allows the knife to have uh, a hard contact seal between the blade and the handle. As you can see, the phosphor bronze rings right here. 
Uh, the amount of contact is very small. Uh, and on the inside of the bearing uh, cage, we have the rollers themselves. So it allows the action of uh, double row roller bearings with the sealing capabilities of washers as well. So again, really cool system. And we're pretty much gonna be seeing that system in all the knives that are using uh, double row rollers. So uh, excited to really see that game rolled out in, in greater numbers. Overall, that's pretty much it for this knife. A lot to talk about. And again, I'm really excited for uh, the composite material of the Stellar coming out so soon. I'm hoping to see more of these and uh, looking forward to doing the next video. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.